Um, hey YouTube, Annabelle56 here for more stuff about the tribe. Okie dokie, here are the three books. They are new. And the first book I'm going to look at is Keeping the Dream Alive, um, a memoir by Raymond Thompson. Raymond Thompson came up with the idea for the series for the tribe. It was his original idea. Um, his book is a really interesting read, but he does have Asperger's syndrome, but that's not a negative thing. But it does affect how he writes because he doesn't use I, he uses Ray. And that's quite common with people on the ASC spectrum. They struggle with the concept of I, who is I? It's quite difficult. Um, so they will very often write in their um, third person. So hence Ray refers to himself as Ray. It's an awesome book. It's got some really, really great um, things, screenplays. It's just sort of really interesting about the industry, what it actually took. Because, I mean, this guy, bless him, he actually lived. He didn't live in a house. Um, he kind of like lived between UK, New Zealand and some place in the Mediterranean, I believe. Sorry, Ray, if I got it wrong. Um, you know, for like years just to fund it. It's absolutely incredible, the journey. But um, his use of prose is interesting. But it's a good read. And anybody who's a Tribe fan should just read it. Um, it's awesome. I love the fact that he needs blue socks to write. It's just really, really good. It just shows you the creativity of it. I will just like dip in and read you um, a little bit just so you get some understanding of it. And then it's like, it had always been a problem from the very first time he started writing, no matter how much research, thought, or days, or weeks, months of planning, structuring, developing characters, and overall plot, deciding where and when to start a story, always presenting as seamlessly, in, insurmountably, always presented a seemingly insurmountable challenge, and this screenplay was no different. So he does like to use um, lots of commas in his sentences, and these paragraphs are incredibly long. But, to be absolutely honest, I really don't care. It's a brilliant book. Um, about what it actually took to make the series and I really enjoyed it really really enjoyed it okie dokie Harry Duffin um, has written a mammoth book The Birth of the Mole Rats this is just half of season one which is this over here it has uh, da -da 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 -da. let's see it has 181 chapters. I love the pictures on the back. It's just brilliant. Um, there, I I hope that they're going to actually do the whole series in book form. So I'm guessing for like each series there must be like two to three books, and they are pretty thick. There's some really, really, really great character development. I'm not going to spoil it by telling you it. There's some extra scenes. We get more on the locos, which I think we didn't really get on the TV show for obvious violence reasons. I mean, we did in season two. We got some really great flashbacks with Ebony and her relationship to Zoo and what he did to her. But this book just puts it in uh, in context, really. You've got Zoot. Um, when he was around, he lived um, in the railway. He goes... And Ebony takes control and they move to the hotel. And it really sort of explains a lot of the stuff that you don't see in the TV series because you're with the mall rats. You're, you're in the mall. Uh, you get a little bit more of what's going on outside of the mall. And I really, really like that because it just expanded the um, tribe universe. And it was really, really great. It is a little bit darker than... Season one, because it's a book, it is able to be a little bit more dark and to go into things in a little bit more detail. So it's more violent than the TV show. It does, um, there is a little bit of light swearing, something that they couldn't get away with, obviously, in the TV show because of censorship reasons. But it, it reflects um, the time. It is actually quite dark. And um, I wasn't expecting, I was expecting it to be dark, but I wasn't expecting it to be that. It's almost like they've suddenly sort of gone, yay, we're in book form. Let's sort of like shake things up and let's really push the boat out um, with it. 
but it does reflect. I mean, that's what would happen if suddenly all the adults dropped dead and you just sort of like had all the eight under 18 year olds trying to rule the world. Um, you would end up with paracrase nutters um, and things. Okie dokie, I've talked about those two great books. Absolutely great books. This is the book that Tribe fans have been waiting for. This is season six of the Tribe, but it's not season six as it would have been because of the new tomorrow, which um, was developed. Basically, Channel 5 had committed themselves to six seasons of the Tribe. By Series 5, the older cast were basically sort of in the mid um, early 20s and it was stretching the premise and it was really sort of the show really wanted to go into sort of more young adult kind of areas and it was really pushing that and I guess Channel 5 got cold feet because they were like oh we can't have everybody falling pregnant and rape and all of this business so they were kind of like ah, ah, what do we do what do we do um so they took the main sort of story of season six and gave it um, to younger actors, sort of like from 12 to 14, I'm guessing. And they had it sort of like a prequel or is it a sequel? Read this and you kind of learn some interesting fact. I'm going to go with it being a prequel or a possible a sequel. I'm going to go with it being a sequel. Raymond disagrees, but um, it kind of makes more sense in my head for the continuity. Sorry, Raymond, to disagree. Um, and it took, it just sort of took the story of this island um, because, as you know, at the end of season five, everybody's on a boat fleeing the city. And I'm not going to tell you why because that's a big enough spoiler as it, as it is. And they took um, basically that island and those characters and developed that without the more rats visiting. So they did that instead of Tribe Season 6. This book... Um, basically continues on. You start on that boat at the end of season five and it continues on with that story. You just don't get harmony and you don't get flame. You get some other things and you get some other characters that crop up um, in it, but you just don't have that detail. Every single tribe character is mentioned. Jaffa, the Guardian, is mentioned. Tysan is mentioned. You don't find out what happens to everybody, but they're at least all mentioned and it's a great way for closure. It really is. I read this and I now feel that if I never got um, season seven or season eight, I could move on with my life quite happily. Um, okay, it's by AJ Penn. It's called A New World, The Tribe, the long-awaited story in the continuing saga of the tribe. I believe there's going to be more of these and there's going to be more of those. And I'll read you the blurb. Forced to flee the city in their homeland along with abandoning their dream of building a better world from the ashes of the old the more rats embark on a perilous journey of discovery into the unknown cast adrift fru could have foreseen the dangers that lay in store what is the secret surrounding the jazolil apologize for name reading will they unravel the mystery of the collective let alone overcome the many challenges and obstacles they encounter as they battle the forces of Mother Nature, unexpected adversities, and at times even themselves. That bit is from the new to tomorrow. Um, will they finally discover what happened to their friends and loved ones who disappeared? Oh, the deleted. Oh, we so want to know. Above all, can they build a new world in their own image by keeping the dream alive? Um... Look, there's Zoot. He's always around. This is season six. This guy went in season one and he's still here. He is hugely important. And then you've got, of course, Bray, floppy head there. It's awesome. If the only one of these three books that you get is this one and you're a Tribe fan, I recommend this one. Um, it is darker. It is edgier. Because it's in book form, guys. It's no longer sort of cosy catastrophe anymore. It is going to be harsh and I mean some there's a scene at the end I'm not going to describe it because I actually can't describe it on YouTube it is sort of you know 15 plus certificate but we're talking in a world where there are no adults there are no rules as you said power and chaos everybody power and chaos um hugely hugely 
Um, great. I really love this book. I'm going to go now because this video is an extremely long one. Um, the Tribe, if you've not seen it, there are um, episodes on YouTube. Check out the official um, Cloud9 channel and the official Tribe channel. Um, because it really is a great show. There's the album Abamasa. Check out the um, music as well. Uh, though the music in season two, to be fair, was a tad cheesy. But then again, it saved them having to use any sort of music that was of the time. So the tribe is really kind of unique because it doesn't date. I mean, I'm not too worried that they're using videos and CDs in it. Because if you were in that situation and the internet had crashed, you would get out your CD player. You would get out your video player once you'd figured out or hooked up the electricity. You would still be able to you know, use those things because you'd be sort of, you know, videos and tapes and CDs would come back in because they're easy to use and you'd use sort of like your Game Boy Colour with your batteries that you could um, use rather than your chargeable DSs. Okay, I've babbled enough. The Tribe is awesome. Um, power and Chaos, everybody. Power and Chaos.